Hello besties and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing all the fashion and beauty predictions I have for 2024. Obviously, this is not all going to be accurate, but these are things that I've been seeing from the runway this year, as well as a few articles I've been reading. I want to cover both macro and micro trends so that Obviously, we cover all the bases and obviously you don't have to partake in every single trend. These are just some things that I personally love to dabble in just to experiment with my fashion and beauty taste. Some might work, some might not work and I just thought I would discuss this because I've been seeing a few things that I want to bring to light. I would love it if you guys would give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more fashion, beauty and makeup content as well as a few ranking videos here and there because you girl loves to watch them and so without further ado and further blabbing let us hop right into this video so let's start off with my favorite category being fashion at the moment honestly it changes between fashion hair and makeup firstly i want to cover leather not only is it going to come back in long leather skirts, but we're also going to be seeing it in micro leather shorts, which I am so, so excited for. If you know me, you know that your girl loves a leather moment and I've been obsessed with, I guess, leather dresses and just the overall aesthetics of leather pants. It just goes with every outfit and it just elevates your whole look if you get a right fitting leather piece in your wardrobe and don't get me started on leather jackets i <laughs> i kind of collect them for a living not gonna lie if you look at my wardrobe you will see leather jackets overtaking everything like for clothes i'm a basic girl but when it comes to leather jackets it's I gotta catch them all, you know? Before we move on, I want to also highlight the overarching aesthetic that we're going to see a lot of, which is business core or corp core, where essentially we're going to be wearing a lot of business casual clothes. Please don't mind the birds. This is what it's like living in Australia. We definitely are heading this way because of the current economic state and trying to normalize, you know, wearing nine to five fashion where people are wearing a lot of minimal pieces but staple pieces in their wardrobes rather than going on the maximalist route which requires a lot of money and a bigger budget which i personally am a fan of because i've always been like that i do love to keep my wardrobe pretty minimal and do spend money on the occasional piece that i actually love and that is going to be associated with a certain event or occasion I also love with the business casual aesthetic that I get to see people's style go from very young and kind of whimsical to mature and sophisticated and that's more so what I'm leaning towards in my later 20s. It just makes you look more put together and that's just something I'm just going to be striving towards whether that be immediately because I find like you have to really invest in good pieces if you want them to last long. So with that being said, I'm not going to jump in and buy the first suit I see just because it's cheap and it looks, it's a suit. I want to get a suit that will last me years down the line and that I know that I will actually wear for an occasion that is well fitted and timeless. Again, alongside this aesthetic, I want to touch on these garments also being, like I said before, well fitted. I think we're going to steer away from the loose and baggy jeans. However, we're not going to go into skinny jeans category. But if there is a possible resurgence, which I do find the older generation bringing back the skinny jean, I am all for it because I find that skinny jeans can look flattering on a lot of women. And honestly, I've seen how it can transform someone's confidence from baggy to a skinny jean. So if you are all up for it and love wearing it and love styling it, you do you. But for me, skinny jeans, 
have been traumatic. I don't know what I was doing wearing them growing up, but that's okay. I feel like I'm not gonna knock myself down. If I find a good pair of Levi's or skinny jeans that make me feel good, I'm gonna wear them or buy them. But as for now, it's just not in, it's not something I'm looking out for openly, but definitely support when I see others who wear it. The last thing I'm gonna touch on in terms of the business casual aesthetic is the accessories of Mary Jane's and briefcases coming more into casual wear. I just see people carrying like their briefcase out and out from work and wearing them when they go out for a drink with friends. I don't think we're gonna see ones that kind of are more sturdy but more kind of flexible looking briefcases if that makes sense that's like worn in versus kind of a very stiff briefcase that's used for the conventional laptop bag. Now finally we are moving away from this whole business casual aesthetic talk. I think and I haven't really seen a lot of people talk about this or even in magazines but rom-com core is something that I personally would love to see coming back especially with the asymmetrical dresses and the frills and the not so conventional floral patterns where it's less of a grandma print but more kind of blown out and kind of sheer but like layered I just think I'm going to put some images up obviously of all these outfits because it honestly wouldn't make sense if I just like sit here and talk. Hence me sitting to the side of the camera but I just feel like the asymmetrical line is something that I grew up seeing in rom-coms and I've always wanted to wear. So if we bring the elegant rom-com core in terms of dress um, dresses and I guess workwear, right? Because when they went to work, they kind of styled that 90s kind of minimalistic look, which again, goes back to business casual. So I guess we are we are really going back in time to the 90s with what we wear in terms of dressing for an occasion and dressing up for work. A few things we aren't gonna see going away anytime soon is obviously the off the shoulder top and what I've been recently seeing is great pleated or just pleated skirts, which I am a personal fan of, especially the ones like the skorts from like IMG and stuff. I love a good mini skirt, especially one that fits well. Oh, absolutely. Sorry, I mean skort, especially one that fits well and just gives the illusion of a true pleated like mini skirt. It just looks cheeky, but like elegant and sophisticated all at once. And I live for it. In terms of the color of the year, I know that recently Pantone said it was like peach fuzz or something like that, like really a really soft light peach. But I personally think it's going to be purple, like the traditional purple, not a dark, not a lilac, but like a traditional mid-tone purple because I've been seeing it come up in a lot of online retailers. And I honestly feel like that color really vibes with a lot of different skin tones, elevates either the golden or pink undertones in your skin. And especially if you have melanin skin, girl. In terms of overall fashion houses, I feel like we're gonna see a lot of heritage logos coming back into fashion where they're going back to their 90s and kind of focusing on a sportswear where, you know, the rich or the rich back in the day used to wear to country clubs and kind of bring back kind of the sports edgy wear that they did back in the 90s because obviously we are seeing that. And this is definitely something I would I go for and I've been wearing for years because I love the generational appeal where everyone and anyone can wear it as well as it touches a lot of the nostalgia aspect for me in terms of you know seeing my favorite tv show characters like from friends wear it and I love how simplistic it is but also functional and to conclude fashion I am just going to touch on again a few accessory trends that I've been seeing which are kitten heels and 
heels with a sling back on it. I personally am all for the kitten heels. As much as your girl loves a stiletto and a pump, I will not be wearing them. I just find them looking so elegant. You can really wear them with anything. I really want to see, along with that rom-com core, wear heels with casual outfits because I find that we as women nowadays are told to wear heels only for formal occasions and made uncomfortable when we wear them with like jeans and a t-shirt. I feel like it gives off that like main character vibe about you and you're just like living your best life. With the bows coming back, I've seen people do this trend of accessorizing your accessories. So like putting bows or like a chain on your bag and just going beyond just the accessory and personalizing everything with like charm bracelets and adding charms and decals to everything in their life just to make it more personal which I don't hate again it's it's coming back around with the 90s take a shot every time I say 90s but I guess you guys are getting the gist of things I think making things more personal making give me a life a lot more personal purpose and adding a label to things is where we are heading towards. Also in terms of color, I want to mention that the color baby yellow I've been seeing a lot more of. I just feel like every girl has been wearing a baby yellow dress and then referring to how to lose a guy in 10 days, which I don't hate because that movie is the best. But other than that, I feel like that color is really coming in. I've been seeing a lot of that pop up on my Pinterest board, as well as the obvious traditional just red in all different shades. Like, hello, how can you not? Not only because it's seasonal, but your girl loves red, so I don't hate this at all. And the last, I guess you could say it's an accessory or clothing piece, is fur jackets. But not only fur jackets, but light kind of multicolored fur jackets, not just your traditional black or one-toned fur jacket um, and like different lengths as well, like the ones that come to your waist versus just like to your knees. So I just like have been seeing a lot more of these, especially when it comes to winter, winter wear and it just gives that kind of old London girl look, which I love. Like, it just reminds you of Bridget Jones and the jackets that she wore. And I really want to see more of it. Having that piece just elevates your entire wardrobe. And I cannot wait to see more Pinterest girlies or just girls on the street wear it. So, not girls on the street, but girls wear it when I'm walking down the street. That's what I meant to say. That would have headed in a different direction if it continued. Now, let's move on to beauty. Now, beauty is going to cover both hair and makeup, but let's start off with makeup because I'm so excited to see more lip liners being released because the trend that I know is going to be popping off is the pop of lip liner. Like wearing a lip liner two or three shades darker than your natural lip color and wearing like a nudish gloss or lipstick to kind of ombre, not ombre, but like actually make it look like you are wearing lip liner just to emphasize the lip line. I love that look. Guiltily enough, half my For You page on tr um, TikTok is girls showing their lip combo and I am guilty of posting that too. And they are one of my favorite videos to film. So with more lip liners being released, <laughs> it's, it's dangerous for your girl because now I'm more inclined to either A, buy more lip liners or B, do more videos that give you guys more lip combinations. And since we're on a roll talking about the pop of a lip liner, I want to touch on the pop effect where whenever someone's wearing like a full face of makeup, there will be a certain feature that they're going to try and enhance with either a pop of color, glitter, shimmer, whether that be blue eyeshadow, which is another color that I've been seeing pop up on my Pinterest feed. It's called like blue eye makeup where it's like true royal blue versus like just a baby blue, which again goes back in time to like either the early 2000s because I remember buying like just a single eyeshadow of that royal blue to put it on my like lash line for high school. Yeah, it took me like a total of like maybe 30 minutes for a teacher to notice and then like call me out on it and told me to wipe it off. But you know, I was rebellious like that, not really. 
your girl was a nerd, so there's that. I still feel that the cool tones in terms of makeup and eyeshadow are gonna stay because it only started resurging towards the end of 2013. So I'm pretty sure for the most of 2024, we are gonna see cool tones still come into play. The next trend we're gonna see is the blush placement. Move from the highest points of the cheekbones to the apples of the cheeks. Again, this has a lot to do with bringing back that rom-com core and aesthetic because a lot of the ladies, especially Samantha, used to wear her blush over here in Sex and the City. And I love that TV show. But in terms of this trend in particular, please wear blush how you want it because we have come a long way to learn different blush placements to suit your face. And obviously, if you have a round face, that's never a good idea to wear your blush over here unless you personally love the look on you. For me, it's a no-go. So if you want to experiment in it, obviously, definitely do. But again, please do not force yourself to enter trends that you do not feel comfortable in because at the end of the day, you need to be confident when you're walking out that door and no one else opinion should matter around you. And last but not least, we have two hair predictions that I have. The first one being the undone kind of updo, which is definitely along the lines of like that Pamela Anderson hairdo, which I absolutely love. The bigger the bun, the better. Um, with like the whole like side part kind of fringe aspect coming through where everything's wispy and looking Kind of like you haven't tried but you still kind of look like disheveled but still like put together like giving that hot mom kind of look which i don't hate and to juxtapose that we are still gonna see that smooth kind of blowout just think about like anne hathaway in a recent like press tour and her interviews with like jimmy fallon and drew barrymore where it's just like smooth slightly wavy blown out look that's here to stay just because, again, of the fashion trends and the makeup trends, kind of beauty trends, kind of going hand in hand to complement each other. But yeah, yeah, that is all the trend predictions I had. I hope you enjoyed it. I personally love filming these type of videos where I get to chat about the things that I personally love. And if you guys like more videos like this around fashion, beauty, and just lifestyle vlogs, which I am so keen on getting more into plus the occasional again ranking video which i have a list of ones that i want to do please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to my channel and i will catch you my beautiful best friends in the next video bye